Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And today we are getting some of our first looks at renders of the 2020 iPad Pro, courtesy of OnLeaks in collaboration with iGeek's blog. So today let's go over everything we can expect, including design, features, release date, and why Apple might just be sticking three cameras on the iPad Pro. Now again, these renders do come from OnLeaks, who has an astounding reputation of leaking final designs for Apple's hardware. And he also provided us with the iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro final design renders some time ago, so I have a lot of confidence in these renders, and it seems certain that this will be the final design of the 2020 iPad Pro. Now, in terms of the design, this iPad Pro's front design looks very similar to the last model. That is to say, the same reduced bezels, face ID, and the lack of a home button, complete with those squared off designs which heavily resemble phones like the iPhone 5. And even though the front is mostly unchanged and we can expect a very similar design language, there are some design differences here. That is when we turn our attention to the rear, and the first and most obvious new design is the new triple camera array on the back of this device. These renders also show the option of either a glass back design or an aluminum design. From my understanding, OnLeaks did this because he was not certain what the final design material would be for the 2020 models. Although OnLeaks is covering himself pretty well here by including both an aluminum and a glass design, I would have to say that I'm almost certain that Apple will stick with an aluminum back for the iPad Pro. I don't really see the benefits of switching to glass, especially because I'm not expecting us to be placing our iPads down on wireless chargers anytime soon. And the only reason I could see Apple going with a glass design for the back of the iPad Pro is for that two-toned finish with the matte back and the glossier camera bump that you also see on the iPhone 11 Pro. So that could be a design decision. The more interesting thing to me is that this leak might indicate that Apple might have to make the iPad Pro a little bit thicker to accommodate the new camera bump. The current iPad Pros are crazy thin at just 5.9 millimeters, so Apple definitely has some room to go thicker without hampering the experience. Not to mention the 2018 iPad Pro did have a little bit of controversy in the beginning of its release with some users reporting that their iPad Pros were bent, so this could be Apple maybe going back to that design and refining it a little bit by making it a little bit thicker, by reinforcing that area, maybe this would lead to less iPads being bent. But let's turn our attention back to those cameras and talk less about the design of them and more about the features. So again, this looks exactly like the iPhone 11 Pro's triple camera array. Obviously, we can expect that this will have the same exact camera module, so a wide angle, an ultra wide angle, and a telephoto camera lens. Complete with additional software features like portrait mode, night mode, and Apple's new deep fusion technology. And I'm sure a lot of people are watching this video at this point and wondering why is Apple adding two additional camera lenses to the iPad Pro? Do we really need to focus on camera technology for the iPad? I know a lot of people don't like it when they see people out in public holding up their iPads and taking pictures. So a lot of people are probably going to have a problem with this design. Well, I actually think there might be two different reasons why Apple is incorporating a triple camera array onto the iPad Pro. The first and more obvious reason is that the iPhone 11 Pro has terrific camera quality. So by adding in this triple camera system, you would get a much better camera. Now, maybe this isn't particularly for still photos, even though I'm sure that this iPad Pro would take great still photos, but one of the things I was blown away with when doing my iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro reviews was the video quality that these cameras were capable of getting. And those cameras can capture fantastic 4K video footage at high dynamic range with extended frame rates all the way up to 60 FPS. I know that I've been using the iPhone 11 Pro to shoot video a lot for my own videos recently, and I have been really impressed by what this phone can do. So imagine that device as a tool that could not only capture that beautiful 4K footage, but then you can edit it directly on the device using an app like LumaFusion or iMovie. And even last year with the 2018 iPad Pro, Apple actually made a series of ads where they shot and edited the entire ad on an iPad Pro, including using the main camera for those ads. So if you're positioning this Pro device for filmmakers or video editors, that could be a really compelling use case. However, I think the much more compelling and likely reason why these iPad Pros have a three camera array is for future use with augmented reality applications. It's no secret that Apple is working on an augmented reality headset, which is rumored to debut shortly after this iPad Pro is released. 
Apple is also said to be including a time of flight sensor on the 2020 iPad Pro, and according to notable analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, this time of flight sensor would work pretty similar to the true depth camera system on the front of the iPhone and iPad Pro. And these iPads would be able to get more accurate depth data from the world around them. This is actually one of the things that the render doesn't show off. So maybe there will be another sensor or cutout in that triple camera hump when the final design is shown off. But I think this actually makes a lot of sense. If AR is Apple's next big platform, using devices like the iPad Pro are going to be great not only to view augmented reality, but also to use that time of flight sensor to capture depth data or to scan 3D models for data for AR applications. So think about that. The iPad Pro probably wouldn't be the best device to view AR on, especially for a long period of time, you'd be holding it up, but having that capability to view AR and then also using that time of flight sensor as a more accurate measurement to get more depth data, that could be integral to AR development. Think about how important the Mac was for developing the iOS platform. We could see something similar for the iPad Pro and the iPhones going forward, where you can capture this depth data for real world use in AR applications. Or it could also be a way to make sure that developers have access to these tools so that when Apple is ready to launch an AR headset, they already have developers familiar with the way that the time of flight sensor works because I assume that time of flight sensor would also be on Apple's AR glasses headset. So I think the immediate benefits of this time of flight sensor aren't going to be apparent when the 2020 iPad Pro launches, but I could see a lot of direction for that sensor that could be really important for the future of Apple's devices. Again, that's just a bit of speculation on my point as to why Apple would be adding a three camera sensor array to the iPad Pro, but there are some more concrete details that we do know, and that is that the iPad Pro will of course feature a brand new A13X processor, which of course is probably going to be crazy powerful. Seriously, the 2018 iPad Pro with the A12X was a super powerful CPU that even rivaled the MacBook Pro in terms of performance. So it's going to be very interesting to see how far Apple has advanced their chip design for the 2020 iPad Pro, which could also be a harbinger for the long rumored release of a Mac laptop using Apple's own A series of chips. And depending on on how powerful these A13X processors are, it will be a good indication on if Apple is ready to transition the Mac over to the ARM processor. Now there is one more thing I would like to mention in regards to the 2020 iPad Pro, and we've been talking a lot about what we can expect for this device, but I also wanna mention what we shouldn't expect for this device, and that mainly comes with rumors of mini LED display technology making its way to an iPad Pro in 2020. And if you're wondering what the benefits of a mini LED display would be in an iPad Pro, it would basically allow for thinner and lighter product designs, and it would also allow for wider color gamuts, higher contrast, and better HDR with the ability for local dimming, which you currently see on high-end LCD TVs. And basically, this would be a way to get a lot of the same benefits as OLED panels without drawbacks like screen burn. Burning. And I think most people would assume that mini LED display technology is coming to this iPad Pro, which we can expect sometime in the first quarter of 2019, probably at a March Apple event. Now, the mini LED display technology comes out of reports from analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who says Apple will be incorporating this display technology in a 2020 iPad Pro. Now, where this is kind of confusing is that Ming-Chi Kuo is basically saying there's going to be two iPad Pros coming out in 2020. Because from what I can read into, it looks like these 2020 iPad Pros slated for release sometime in the first quarter, most likely at a March Apple event, will not incorporate the mini LED display technology. Strangely enough, Ming-Chi Kuo is saying that a 12.9 inch iPad Pro will be released either in the fourth quarter of 2020 or the first quarter of 2021. Ming-Chi Kuo is also calling this version of the iPad Pro a high-end device, so we may see an even more expensive top-of-the-line iPad Pro with this mini LED display technology that will separate itself from the current iPad Pros we are expecting in March. So that could indicate an even more expensive tier for the iPad Pro, which would make sense to me if Apple is planning on releasing a new iPad Pro so soon in 2020. I really can't see them releasing one in March of 2020. And then again, at the September event, releasing another version of the iPad Pro. 
Again, maybe that comes true if Apple is planning on delaying that until 2021. So we'd have a 2020 iPad Pro and then another release in 2021. So again, and sorry if that was confusing, just to reiterate, do not expect the mini LED display technology to make its way to the 2020 iPad Pro that we are expecting in March. But so far, these look like the most concrete leaks and rumors regarding the 2020 iPad Pro, and these renders look to be almost finalized from my point of view. OnLeaks has done a very good job in the past and has a very good track record, so if I'm looking at these renders, I'm saying these are pretty close to the final design. But anyway, enough about what I think. Let me know what you think of the rumored 2020 iPad Pro in the comments below. As always, if you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.